we felt that it was very important to design the Batmobile first before we approached any of the other aspects of design of the film. Because I had a very specific idea in my head about um, a contemporary approach to a Batmobile. And our approach to it would tell everybody who saw it a lot about what we're doing with the whole film, which is a more grounded reality in which we're trying to base this story. When we first started talking, Chris had this idea of crossing a Lamborghini and a Humvee. Chris was sort of making a little primitive model out of Play-Doh and said, sort of like this. It was very, very crude. It looked more like a croissant than a car. But I felt very strongly that if we cracked that and showed it to people, they would either get it or they wouldn't. And if they didn't get it, then I'd know I was in trouble. Then fairly early on in the process, Nathan Crawley, the production designer, came on. And while I was writing, this was crazy, he created a little model shop in Chris's garage. It was very much a film school atmosphere. That was part of the fun. We really decided to be private and just started what I call model bashing. We just started making models of cars. It's got bits of stealth bomber in it. It's got bits of Lamborghinis, bits of Hummers, and all different things put together in this marvelous combination. Chris write his script and then come into the garage and I'd be covered in glue <laughs> with car concepts. The funny thing is the craftsmanship was really good too. You could see in Chris a kid that had built little car models when he was younger because you know he, he and Nathan really had this down. As an evolutionary process Nathan was able to build one and I would look at it and make suggestions or actually change things like myself and then we would move to the next step and then the next one. We made about five or six Batmobiles. The one is the finished Batmobile, I th actually I think is the Mark V, so we took about eight weeks to build. When the script was done, we sort of presented not only the script, but all these great Photoshop elements of what the world and the Batmobile would look like so that Warner Brothers could get the whole picture. And that initial prototype is 90% what the finished Batmobile became. Took that model to England, found these great guys to produce the car full size. Chris Nolan wanted the Batmobile to be a real car, not just a car that looked pretty and but didn't actually function. You know, his gem was look, I want this to be a mean machine, I want it to perform, I want it to go through things, and, and that was you know the how we went into developing this whole car. <laughs> The challenge is first technically how to make something as complicated as that steer and work. Every piece of it has been made. You start with a clean jig, put the chassis on, start building the roll cage around the, the driver and the occupants in there and build it up from nothing. The front end of the car is what is so different. There is no front axle, there's nothing holding the wheels in the conventional way. The wheels have to be held from the outside. It was difficult, but we always knew it was possible. And three, two, one, go. Chris had described a cockpit opening like the petals of a flower. We tried several times to talk him into a, an easier system, which made our life a bit easier, but he was not going to have that. The mechanism ended up where the front windscreen had went up into the roof, and then the whole roof slides back, and then the, the two cockpit seats rise up. It was a nightmare trying to get that right. You've just got to have guys who've got technical knowledge of how to put all this together. They were so faithful to our original kit bash model that the glue blobs that Nathan had put into the model had been reproduced uh, full size. It was quite a strange thing to look at. It's nine foot four at its widest. Lengthwise, it's 15 feet. And heightwise, it's about five foot, I think. It weighs two and a half tons. There's nearly half a ton of rear axle and wheels and tires. So there's a big chunk of the weight sitting there. Everybody was surprised to find that the Batmobile was ready before we thought it was going to be. That's been very thrilling to watch a model that Nathan Crowley just built in my garage back in LA become a full-size uh, working vehicle. Here we have Andy and Jim going for the land speed record. <laughs> It was about two weeks before we started filming that we got the first prototype without all the bodywork on, just a working chassis with the engine in. So we were sneaking the car around, taking it out to sort of hidden tracks and things, seeing what breaks, what doesn't break. Start off testing it slowly, just drive in a straight line, make sure it handles okay. So what do you think? Does it come in black? 
the purpose of redesigning the Batmobile, which we call the Tumbler, was to have it have capabilities that we felt a crime fighter would need to have in the modern day. The Tumbler was the first thing we designed because I felt that if we could show the, the studio what the Batmobile was in our world, they'd get a handle on what everything else would be. Action! I felt that we needed a new contemporary approach in order to believe in the utility of this vehicle. So what I proposed was a cross between a Lamborghini and a Humvee, something that would have the presence of almost a tank-like vehicle, but also with the speed and grace of a sports car. Just as airplane flaps generate lift to make a plane go up, the tumbler uses flaps to push the vehicle down and achieve greater velocity. The theory behind it is that it's got all these little aerofoils on the outside that all make tiny little wings uh, instead of having one big as an aircraft. The other key aerodynamic element, surprisingly, is the airflow under the car. And this is actually what racing cars use. If you can design that air under the car to go significantly faster than the air on the top of the car, you get low pressure under the car, and the high pressure on top pushes you down on the ground. So if you want to understand how the tumbler gains stability by having the air blow underneath it, you can just take a piece of paper. You can generate high pressure on top and a low pressure underneath by blowing under the paper, and the paper will be forced down. Speed is one thing. But how does something as large as the tumbler manage to maneuver so well? Weight does have a great effect on maneuverability. You have all this mass you have to move around. It's transmitted through the wheels and tires to the road. Really, you've got to hand it to the designers automotive-wise. It's quite a feat of engineering. They seem to have each wheel is, is kind of balanced out by itself without an axle running across the middle. Both wheels are totally independent, so you, one, one wheel can actually stop and the other wheel can rotate so the thing turns right on a dime and it can do that at any speed. That's what's so amazing about it. I gotta get me one of those. The Tumbler is designed to get some of its momentum from a jet-powered engine. Another detail rooted in reality. Jet-powered cars have been used to set land speed records, and they've even made brief trips into the consumer world. They've tried to use jet engines in cars throughout history, 1963, Chrysler introduced the turbine car. 50 models they made uh, had a jet engine in it. Uh, they only gave them to about 200 customers for three months each. It was a very experimental program. Most people who drove it loved it. Unfortunately, the car wasn't great on gas mileage. It's a very complicated car, and it kind of died uh, a few years later. Over here on the throttle, flip that open and throttle up. This will boost you into a rampless jump. Right now! On screen, the tumbler can also make unassisted or rampless jumps. If it comes off perfectly parallel to the ground, it's always going to fall a little bit. And so if it's jumping to something that's a little bit lower, it's OK. If it wants to jump to something at the same height or higher, it needs some form of lift or it needs to come off at a slight angle. The way you could do this is imagine a little bit of a wheelie as you take off. You don't actually need a ramp to get a little bit of vertical velocity, especially since you've got the jet engine on the back to give you that extra thrust. You just get the front end of the car up a little bit, fire your jet engine, and now you're going off at an angle. You know, we were confident that we could do some pretty amazing jumps and it land and drive off, you know, not the classic thing where you, the car jumps, lands, falls apart, and then you cut and put another car in and drive away. You know, we, we were proud of the fact that we could do all that and still carry on the sequence. If you had powerful enough hydraulics or electromagnetic shots up front, and then you had a very powerful jet engine that aimed down a little bit, you might be able to get enough of a leaping effect to go uh, 10, 20, 30 feet in the air. The real danger is the landing. He's going to be landing at a very high speed. So the front end of the car has to have the stability and the shock system to survive that jump. And in fact, if you look closely, the Batmobile does some interesting thing. The front wheels extend, there's extra shock absorbers there, and when it hits the ground, it slows down over that longer distance that enables it to survive the impact. Hi there, I hope to, you like the video. Are you a DC Comics fan? Well, here's a pretty cool fact from the DC universe. Did you know that DC once created a superhero called Vibe? He was a break dancer that danced for justice. He used his powers as a dancer to create sound waves.
Mm. DC quickly found out it was a bit lame as a character and killed him off after a few episodes. Come on now, it would have been an awesome superhero. Imagine how cool he would have been. What about you? What do you think of a breakdancing superhero? <laughs> wow. What's your favorite DC movie and character? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. See ya.